What is the first step you should take when you find an unresponsive adult lying on the floor? A. Start chest compressions. B. Give two rescue breaths. C. Check for responsiveness and shout for help. D. Call the family doctor. Answer, C. Always begin by checking responsiveness and shouting for help. This determines whether the victim needs CPR and initiates help early. When performing high-quality CPR on an adult, the compression rate should be A. 60 to 80 compressions per minute. B. 80 to 100 compressions per minute. C. 100 to 120 compressions per minute. D. 120 to 140 compressions per minute. Answer, C. The recommended compression rate for adult CPR is 100 to 120 compressions per minute to optimize blood circulation. Which action should be taken immediately after delivering a shock with an AED? A. Wait for the AED to reanalyze. B. Deliver two rescue breaths. C. Resume chest compressions. D. Check for a pulse. Answer, C. After a shock is delivered, resume CPR immediately starting with chest compressions, unless the AED prompts otherwise. What is the correct hand placement for adult chest compressions during CPR? A. One hand on the forehead, the other on the chest. B. One hand over the lower rib cage. C. Two fingers at the center of the chest. D. Two hands on the lower half of the sternum. Answer, D. Compressions should be done with two hands placed on the lower half of the sternum to generate sufficient pressure. What depth of compression is recommended for high-quality adult CPR? A. At least 1 inch. B. About 2 inches. C. At least 2 inches but no more than 2.4 inches. D. More than 3 inches. Answer, C. Compressions should be at least 2 inches deep but not exceed 2.4 inches to avoid injury while maintaining effectiveness. What is the ratio of chest compressions to rescue breaths in adult 1 rescuer CPR? A. 15 colon 2. B. 30 colon 2. C. 5 colon 1. D. 20 colon 2. Answer, B. The correct ratio for adult 1 rescuer CPR is 30 compressions followed by 2 breaths. If a choking victim becomes unresponsive, what should you do first? A. Perform abdominal thrusts. B. Call emergency services. C. Start CPR with chest compressions. D. Sweep the mouth immediately. Answer, C. Begin CPR with chest compressions if the person becomes unresponsive due to choking. Do not attempt a blind finger sweep. Which of the following indicates high-quality CPR? A. Shallow compressions and rapid breaths. B. Slow compressions with deep breaths. C. Fast, deep compressions with complete recoil. D. Interrupted compressions every 10 seconds. Answer, C. High-quality CPR involves fast, 100-120-min, deep compressions with complete chest recoil and minimal interruptions. What should be done if a victim has a pulse but is not breathing? A. Begin chest compressions. B. Start rescue breathing. C. Wait for them to regain consciousness. D. Shake the victim to wake them up. Answer, B. Provide one breath every 5 to 6 seconds if the adult has a pulse but is not breathing adequately. How often should you switch roles when performing to rescue or CPR? A. Every 10 minutes. B. After every 5 sets of 30 colon 2. C. Every 2 minutes or 5 cycles. D. After each shock. Answer, C. Rescuers should switch roles every two minutes to prevent fatigue and ensure effective compressions. Which victim benefits most from CPR with immediate defibrillation? A. Victim of stroke. B. Drowning victim. C. Cardiac arrest due to ventricular fibrillation. D. Victim with asthma. Answer, C. Ventricular fibrillation requires rapid defibrillation to restore normal heart rhythm. When giving rescue breaths using a barrier device, what is most important? 
A. Delivering breaths quickly. B. Watching the chest rise. C. Tilting the head fully back. D. Giving breaths every second. Answer, B. Effective breaths should make the chest visibly rise, indicating air is entering the lungs. What is a common mistake made during CPR that reduces effectiveness? A. Switching rescuers too frequently. B. Allowing complete chest recoil. C. Interrupting compressions for too long. D. Keeping a steady compression rhythm. Answer, C. Interruptions longer than 10 seconds reduce the effectiveness of CPR and circulation. Which is the first step when using an AED? A. Plug-in pads. B. Analyze rhythm. C. Turn on the device. D. Start CPR. Answer, C. Turn on the AED first to begin voice prompts and instructions. If the AED says, no shock advised, what should you do next? A. Turn off the AED. B. Perform rescue breaths only. C. Resume CPR immediately. D. Wait until the AED reanalyzes. Answer, C. Continue CPR unless the victim shows clear signs of life or breathing. How can you minimize air entering the stomach during rescue breaths? A. Deliver slow breaths and open the airway properly. B. Push the chest hard and fast. C. Give breaths quickly without pause. D. Avoid tilting the head. Answer, A. Delivering slow breaths with a proper head tilt chin lift helps prevent gastric inflation. What is the proper compression to breath ratio for two rescuer child CPR? A. 30 colon 2. B. 20 colon 2. C. 15 colon 2. D. 5 colon 1. Answer, C. In two rescuer child CPR, the ratio changes to 15 compressions and two breaths. When is it appropriate to stop CPR? A. When AED arrives. B. When the victim begins to breathe. C. When you're too tired. D. After two minutes. Answer, B. Only stop CPR if the victim shows signs of life, a professional takes over, or you're too exhausted to continue. What is the best method to open the airway of an unresponsive victim with no trauma? A. Jaw thrust maneuver. B. Tilt head and lift chin. C. Lift the neck. D. Press on the forehead. Answer, B. Use the head tilt, chin lift technique when there is no suspected spinal injury. What should you do before delivering a rescue breath? A. Check the carotid pulse. B. Look for chest movement. C. Ensure a proper seal on the mask. D. Squeeze the victim's shoulder. Answer, C. A good seal ensures the breath is delivered into the lungs, not into the environment. Which of the following describes agonal breathing? A. Normal deep breathing. B. No breathing. C. Irregular gasping. D. Shallow, steady breathing. Answer, C. Agonal gasps are not effective breaths and are a sign of cardiac arrest. What is the most reliable indicator of effective CPR? A. Audible chest clicks. B. Visible chest recoil. C. Carotid pulse detectable during compressions. D. Chest rises with each compression. Answer, C. A palpable pulse during compression suggests effective blood flow is being generated. What is the ideal chest compression fraction during CPR? A. 30%. B. 50%. C. 60%. D. 80% or higher. Answer, D. Compression fraction refers to the percentage of total CPR time spent performing compressions. Higher than 80% is optimal. In adult CPR, the recommended hand technique is A. Two fingers on the sternum. B. Fists on the chest. C. One palm on forehead, one on the chest. D. Heel of one hand on sternum, other hand on top. Answer, D. For effective force, use the heel of one hand with the other hand on top, fingers interlaced.
When should an AED be used in the BLS sequence? A. Immediately after checking responsiveness. B. Only if CPR fails. C. After two rounds of CPR. D. As soon as it's available. Answer. D. Early defibrillation is critical in cardiac arrest and should be used immediately when available. What is the recommended action if an infant becomes unresponsive after a choking episode and you are alone? A. Begin CPR immediately, starting with chest compressions. B. Give two rescue breaths first before compressions. C. Deliver five back slaps followed by five chest thrusts. D. Shake the infant gently to stimulate response. Answer, A. If the infant becomes unresponsive, immediately begin CPR starting with chest compressions. Do not attempt further back slaps or chest thrusts once the infant is unresponsive. During two rescuer adult CPR, how often should rescuer switch roles to prevent fatigue? A. Every five minutes. B. After every two minutes or five cycles of compressions. C. Only when the compressor feels tired. D. After each set of 15 compressions. Answer, B. To maintain high-quality compressions and minimize fatigue, rescuers should switch roles every two minutes or after every five cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths. What is the correct compression depth for high-quality chest compressions on a child victim? A. About 2 inches or 5 centimeters. B. At least 2.5 inches or 6.5 centimeters. C. About 1.5 inches or 3.8 centimeters. D. At least one-third the depth of the chest, approximately 2 inches. Answer, D. For children, compress to a depth of at least one-third of the chest, which is approximately 2 inches. This ensures adequate circulation during CPR. In a witnessed adult cardiac arrest in a hospital, what is the immediate first action? A. Check for carotid pulse for 30 seconds. B. Call for help and activate the emergency response system. C. Begin chest compressions before calling for help. D. Deliver two rescue breaths before assessing pulse. Answer, B. In a witnessed arrest, the first step is to immediately call for help and activate the emergency response system so the code team and defibrillator can be summoned. What is the primary reason for delivering defibrillation as soon as possible in ventricular fibrillation? A. It jumpstarts the heart muscle to restart circulation. B. It restores normal electrical activity to allow organized contractions. C. It delivers oxygen to the coronary arteries. D. It prevents brain damage by providing rescue breaths. Answer, B. Defibrillation interrupts the disorganized electrical activity in ventricular fibrillation and allows the heart to re-establish a normal rhythm with effective contractions.